a KQED HD production. The day of my heart attack, I woke up and I just felt real weak and tired a little bit. I just thought, oh, it's acid reflux, acid indigestion, it's nothing, you know. But I had promised my four grandkids I was fixing chicken cacciatore, so I went and got it all ready. And then around noon, I laid down because I just didn't feel right. She didn't want to stop doing what she was doing, but her husband, uh, it, would, it became evident that she was so weak and, and debilitated that he called 911. What happened afterward saved 72-year-old Arlene Scuba from dying of a heart attack. Paramedics diagnosed her and alerted John Muir Medical Center in Concord that they were bringing in a heart attack patient from nearby Clayton. By the time the ambulance arrived at the hospital 15 minutes later, everything was in place for a cardiologist to get to work opening up Mrs. Scuba's arteries. If she hadn't been intervened upon the way she was, she wouldn't have survived at that time. Though heart disease remains the number one cause of death in the United States, doctors are saving more heart attack victims than ever before. In less than a generation, the approach has completely shifted. Back in the 70s and 80s, I was actually taught as I was going through my cardiology fellowship that we should not touch a patient with a heart attack. All doctors did was keep patients comfortable and watch up to 20% of them die. A heart attack occurs when a blood clot in one or more coronary arteries completely cuts off blood flow to the heart muscle. Cholesterol plaques that have built up in the arteries over time tear, causing blood to clot suddenly. Blood clots rapidly, so within a few minutes you can go from 50% to 100% blockage. The longer that an artery is blocked, and thereby heart muscle is deprived of oxygen and blood flow, the more muscle is damaged and actually dies. There's an adage that we use in cardiology that time is muscle. The key to saving lives is to reduce the time it takes to get blood flowing again to the heart muscle. Okay, you've got simultaneous pressures. By unclogging patients' arteries sooner, doctors are now able to save all but 5% of those who make it to the hospital. Since 2006, a national effort to improve coordination has reduced the time it takes for a patient to get from the hospital door to the operating table. At John Muir, it usually takes under an hour, compared to a national target of 90 minutes. Once doctors discovered in the 1980s that blood clots cause heart attacks, they worked on ways to eliminate them. They now can slide a narrow plastic tube called a catheter up to the blockage. The catheter can carry a balloon to push the clot aside or a device to suck it out. The doctor may then position a metal mesh called a stent to hold the artery open. In Arlene Scuba's case, the clot was cutting off blood flow to so much of her heart that doctors called this type of lesion a widowmaker. Using balloons and stents, doctors were able to save her heart. I mean, it's amazing to think that this lady who was almost dead, who was shocked three times, resuscitated, now has virtually a normal heart muscle. That's what she has. It's, it's, it's really incredible. I'm just the luckiest person on earth, I guess. One of the lucky ones. One of the issues that we have is for the patient to recognize that they're having a heart attack. That's a really major issue. There can be a myriad of different symptoms. Chest tightness or pressure, neck discomfort, uh, jaw discomfort, even upper back discomfort. Just dial that 911. Dial 911. It's so important. It's the only way you're going to make it. 